everybody, welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about this horrible thing on the screen <laughs> uh, from last year. Uh, I'm still going through all the emails that everyone sent me. It's taken me a while, okay? But I'm going through them. If you sent me an email, I assure you I will get to your email, but it just takes a while. I have like a billion emails. This email is from Alicia Haroldson. And uh, she wanted me to, you know, give my take on this thing or make me aware of it. And I have been aware of it for some time. Uh, I just got sidetracked with a bunch of other things, but I guess now it's my turn to talk about this. And I think I have a few insights that you may or may not have heard about this thing. So <clears throat> she wanted me to look at the video from this guy. And I'm actually, I'm subscribed to him. If you see down here, I'm subscribed. Uh, this is one of the, he's like a non-denominational evangelical watchman on the wall 88. And this guy is a really good, sincere person. But again, if you're going to like subscribe to him or watch him or people like him, like I've said a billion times on the channel, please be careful because the evangelicals and other Christians from other faiths, they don't have modern day revelation. They don't have the Joseph Smith translation. They don't have the same concepts that we do about really important things. So if you watch channels like this, be very just be very careful and first make sure that you understand uh, what our church believes and if we already have an interpretation for certain things. But uh, he is a good guy. He's a good guy. I can tell that he has a good heart. Okay, so I got this um, article up hyper allergic and it talks about this statue because before it went to the UN it was in uh, Rockefeller Plaza I think it is um, being displayed along with another statue I don't know if you were aware of this one but there was also this uh, here let me put open this in a new tab there was also this right here with it so we got this and then we also have this. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what these are all about. Okay. And discuss some of my theory behind it. Or, okay. <clears throat> I, better, I better zoom in. Originating thousands of years ago among the Aztec, Toltec, and Nahua people, the Dia de los Muertos, or Dia of the Dead, is a joyful celebration of life and death. So this has to do with um, ancient, ancient Central American, mostly, culture and the Dia de los Muertos, um, which I think that might also originate there. Well, whatever. But I, I, I'm, I think that um, Mexicans and other Latinos, well, maybe just Mexicans. Sorry, I don't know much about it, but I think that Christians kind of celebrate this as well. Um, that are over there. <clears throat> okay, now this one is identified as a dragon. Okay, and you know, you might call this like a, a griffin, which I, I think a griffin is basically a, it's like a type of dragon from my understanding. But yeah, I think it's significant that this is called a dragon. Okay, and we'll go over all of that in just a little bit. The Manhattan Landmarks Center Plaza Oculus Atelier presents two towering alebricas, uh, vibrantly colored sculptures of animals and mythical creatures meant to serve as spiritual guides. An 11-foot dragon and a 13-and-a-half-foot feathered jaguar, uh, both rendered in fiberglass. The first alebricas were created in the early 1930s by Pedro Linares, an indigenous Mexican artist, using paper mache in the in the southern state of Oaxaca. Artists have continued the tradition in the medium of carved and painted wood. Okay, here they are again. Okay, let's go down here. Now this, I, I actually really kind of like this. This is... I like the ornate um, design. I like the colors. I, I, frankly, I like the colors of these as well. I like the just vibrant colors of these 
uh, all our has. Okay. Flanking the entrance of the famous skyscraper at 30 Rockefeller Plaza are two Katrinas, skeleton figures representing the Aztec goddess Mictacacihuatl by Menchaca Studio. Okay, now, again, I, I'm, I'm no expert on Mexican culture, but I'm sure that all the Roman Catholics or anyone that's Christian in Mexico, they, they probably aren't too hot on this idea of Aztec goddesses or mythical creatures, but I, I don't know. You'll, you'll have to let me know what you know. Okay, and here's the other one. And that's very, it's very pretty. Really like it. Um, was there anything else here? Okay. So, <clears throat> the reason why this is made news in the Christian community is because this is, uh, specifically this one right here, it's very reminiscent of the book of Daniel and also the book of Revelation, because both books talk about beasts, and um, the beasts are figurative, they're metaphorical for earthly kingdoms, right? If we go here to Daniel, let's just read a little bit, uh, just in case you haven't ca caught my other videos, or if this is a new concept to you. Okay, so in Daniel, there's four beasts, right? Let's just talk about the first one. The first was like a lion. Now, this is a jaguar, but I guess a, a jaguar is like a lion. But I think in, in the context here, it's basically saying it is a lion, but whatever. Uh, the first was like a lion and had eagle eagle's wings. Okay. Well, that, that certainly this certainly does look like a lion with eagle's wings. Okay. I beheld till the wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, and then it goes on to the next beast. There's a bear, a leopard, and then the fourth beast, um, it's not compared to an animal, but it is described. But that's not really part of what we're talking about here. Now, I've gone over this before in the on the channel. This is the Old Testament student manual, and it talks about this. And I just want to read a little bit out of here. As mentioned in Daniel 7.17, the four beasts represent four kingdoms, or kings or kingdoms, uh, which shall arise out of the earth. First, which was like a lion with eagle's wings, represented the Babylonian kingdom under Nebuchadnezzar. The lion and eagle are both supreme among beasts of their class. The head of, a, the head of gold in the dream of chapter 2 can be similarly compared and again, that's talking about Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue. Um, it actually like lines up with the beasts. Okay, so the the lion with eagle wings matches with Babylon, and so does the head of the statue. Uh, it's the same thing. It's Babylon, <clears throat> the Babylon that Daniel was in at the time of his writing the book, or that the book describes. Okay, so the head of gold in the dream of chapter 2 can be similar, similarly compared. What the gold is among metals and the head among the members of the body, that the lion is among beast and eagle among us. <clears throat> okay, so it's like, well, you, you get the idea. The plucking of feathers seems to have represented a deprivation of power to fly or the power to dominate and conquer. The change that gave it, it a man's heart is evident, evidently a reference to the humanizing effect of Nebuchadnezzar's madness. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> the way that it went, uh, and we've, we've talked about this a lot of times, it goes from Babylon, and then the, the superpower status passed on after that to Persia and Media. They're kind of like uh, equals are considered the same part of the statue, like the two arms. Okay, and it would correlate with the second beast. And then after that were the Greeks under Alexander the Great, also known as the Macedonian Empire, but it was the Greeks. And that would line up with the third beast. And then <clears throat> the fourth beast matches up with the two legs of the, of, um, the statue, and that represents the Roman Empire.
and it, and it's a it's perfect because the Roman Empire um, it eventually became essentially two empires: the western half and the eastern half. The western half was headquartered in Rome, the city of Rome, and then the eastern half was the later called the Byzantine Empire, and it was headquartered in Constantinople, which is today Istanbul in Turkey. And uh, so it's perfect that the Roman Empire is characterized in Nebuchadnezzar's dream as two legs. And then after that, you have the feet and <clears throat> the toes uh, made of iron and clay, which are basically the remnants of the Roman Empire. Uh, so the modern day countries of Europe, uh, and I think it would also extend to places like Australia, Canada, United States, because we come from Europe, uh, from the UK, and, uh, and the United States definitely has superpower status right now, okay? So, uh, and, and interestingly, it's the fourth beast, which would uh, correspond with the Roman Empire, that it ends, it, it, it's described as having ten horns, which kind of goes along with its statue having ten toes, and uh, so there, there's like a lot that you could look into with this whole thing. So it would seem to be that if they did this on purpose, that this basically represents Babylon, this statue right here. Now, uh, you could say, well, no, it's just part of their culture. And yeah, that could be the case. But still, the, I'm about to go through a bunch of other things that have to do with the United Nations that are just downright creepy and weird. And you know, this fits that pattern very well. And uh, you can say that that's kind of the cover story, like, oh, no, this is just Mexican culture. But I don't know. Th there could be more going on here. So, uh, but you have to take it with a grain of salt. It doesn't really, I don't know that it necessarily means anything as far as, like, a sign of the times. Uh, it could. Uh, maybe the UN, you know, they maybe they have, like, a curator of art, and they're like, okay, we need things that look like... <laughs> We need everything that has to do with evil in the Bible. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know who makes the decisions about these things. Uh, but it is curious. And I'm about to go through a bunch of examples here. Now, talking about this right here, the dragon. Now, in the book of Revelation, Satan is compared to a dragon. And uh, I want to read a couple scriptures here that I think kind of give some light to this. So first in Revelation 13, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now immediately that makes me think of that fourth beast that wasn't compared to a um, to an animal. So it, it seems like it's the Roman Empire and also the uh, the nations after the Roman Empire. Um, I, I didn't pull up the student manual for this because that would just get too deep into it, I think. But anyway, so beast out of the sea. So, you know, all over the earth. Uh, that's usually what that means. Having seven heads and ten horns and his horns, ten crowns, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. <clears throat> And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, so Satan, the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, this is interesting because, <clears throat> okay, so here's the, here's the tweet uh, from the United Nations, okay, the official tweet. So I, I don't know... Let's see. The Guardian of Jaguar donated. Da, 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 da. I don't know, or I couldn't find whether they also got the dragon statue, but the United Nations at least has this um, on their property, on their grounds. So you could say that this would be a really good symbol of just the nations of the earth. You know, Babylon being the first one going on down to our time. 
Um, I guess if you if you wanted to identify one country that's uh, Babylon, I, I guess it'd be the United States because we're we're the superpower. Um, although you know it talks about the fourth beast, it has the four, you know, the ten horns, and then the statue has the ten toes and the feet, whatever. So at the United Nations, which is um, the United Nations <laughs> of of Earth. They have this symbol that you could say is a symbol of su the superpowers and the nations and the all that. And at this event, when it was at Rockefeller Plaza, you had a dragon there, right? So if these people did know that they what they were doing, if they were doing some kind of weird thing, um, you know, unbeknownst to everybody else. Then essentially what you have here is you have the dragon, Satan, and then over here, the nations of the earth that receive their power from the dragon. You see how that goes? So it, it, it's kind of a curious thing to me. And, and you know, I, I already know I can already I can already hear you. There's people that are gonna say, no, it's just a coincidence. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, that, that could be. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't have like a very strong, strong stance on this, but I do find it very curious. And then down here, um, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, "Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him?" Right? Who who's able to make war with um, you know these nations? The, the nations that come from the, the Roman Empire. Uh, not many people have been very successful at that. Right? So, okay. And then there, there's, there's more in Revelation 17. Uh, here it starts talking about the whore that sitteth upon the many waters. Now this is talking about, uh, when you go to the footnote, this is talking about church church of the devil or in other words the great and abominable church i think is a another good way to describe this uh, which was also sitting upon the many waters okay with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth uh, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication so you know this is very similar to the 11th horn in Daniel, because it talks about how there's the ten horns, which are kingdoms, but then an eleventh horn that's smaller, and it has a mouth, and it has eyes, and it speaks great things. In the student manual, it tends, it, it basically, the opinion that's put in there is that the eleventh horn is um, the great and abominable church. And it seems to match up with, right here, the, the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Uh, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, which is the whore, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Okay, interesting that this right here, uh, I mean, there's all, all different types of colors, but uh, when you kind of like squint your eyes, when you look at it, or if you combine the colors, there's, there's a lot of, you know, purple and red and pink and stuff like that. So, I mean, that might be a stretch, but... You can, you can see this is maybe a, scar a scarlet colored beast. Um, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. <clears throat> the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. We know that, you know, purple, that's the color of royalty. So purple and scarlet. Again, you, you look at these statues here, there certainly is a lot of purple. And I think that you could say there's also a lot of red or kind of like a reddish color okay um okay array precious color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a gold cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth see now that's basically just calling it out there how you know this last beast is beast is basically um, 
uh, what would you what would you like a descendant of of the original Babylon, right? That the power has just gone from empire to empire down to the, the current time. So you might as well just say, you know, all of these empires have had the spirit and the power of Babylon this whole time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so if there's anything to this, then that's what I would say that it is. You know, that's what's going out on here. Now, the fact that this was given to the United Nations as a gift um, makes a lot of sense because now I want to go over, you know, some of the quote-unquote artwork, uh, artwork that there is in that building. Um, first is this right here. It's called the meditation room. Um, not creepy at all. Uh, not scary and weird. Okay, so it says here, the meditation room. Here, I'll zoom in. The meditation room was opened in 1952. In the brochure distributed at the opening of the room, Dag, Dag Hammarskjöld said, quote, we have within us a center of stillness surrounded by silence. This house, dedicated to work and debate in the service of peace, should have one room, this dedicated to silence in the outward sense and stillness in the, in the inner sense. People of many faiths will meet here, and for that reason, none of the symbols to which we are accustomed in our meditation could be used. So... That's just a creepy way of saying that they want to make this a room for all faiths and just anybody to come here and for it to be neutral. The mural by Bo Besco represents the light of the skies giving light to the earth. <laughs> Is that what you get out of this? Um, whoa, whoa. Okay, so a bunch of stuff just crashed down on my desk. <laughs> Am I being punished for <laughs> saying that by somebody? Uh, I guess this uh, squiggly line here, maybe that's light. I don't know. Is, is this the earth? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. The stone in the middle of the room represents an altar that is dedicated to, quote, the God whom man worships under many names and in many forms. End quote. It was to remind us of the weight and, sol and solidity of the everlasting. Quote, the material of the stone leads our thoughts to the necessity for choice being destruction and construction between war and peace. End quote. Iron can represent swords, but also plowshares. Okay, so... Oh, and it's a V. Oh, it's a V shaped. Okay, yeah, because you see the corner right here, how it's kind of curved. So it's not it's not a rectangle. Um, the fresco the fresco decorates the narrow end of the V shaped uh, meditation room, painted in blue, white, gray, and yellow. Its hard edge geome geometric forms are bisected lengthwise. Okay, whatever. So <clears throat> yeah, just a wonderful very spiritual place that you can go if you're at the United Nations to, you know, meditate on the problems of the world. Uh, it makes me think that that quote-unquote altar uh, makes me think of this from 2001 A Space Odyssey, right? The, the creepy... <laughs> <laughs> The creepy monolith <laughs> from Space Odyssey uh, that was on the moon during an excavation on the moon. <laughs> uh, there's also this creepy hotel. Uh, this is called the Millennium uh, Hilton. Uh, this is in Manhattan, in New York. And uh, it's been pointed out in other videos that it oversees the site where uh, something happened back you know, in that same year. Uh, there, there are certain things I don't want to say. I don't want to, um, you know, there's certain things that sometimes YouTube doesn't like you to talk about. Uh, this is one of them, but you can see this gigantic hole here where there used to be something uh, that was tall, just like this right here. So uh, people have pointed out that there's this creepy, and it's called this, this hotel, it's called the Millennium 
of all things. Uh, it's big, black, uh, very much resembles this right here. <laughs> Gosh. And this movie <laughs> was called 2001, so the first year of the millennium. So, very odd, very strange. Um, and then the UN in the security council room, where they have this lovely mural. Uh, also, very not creepy and weird and uh, grotesque. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to interpret all these different things. There, there's other channels that cover this stuff, but um, I'm, I'm just going to say I'm not a big fan. Uh, there's also this weird thing here. It looks like it has to do with Greek gods, maybe Roman gods, the sun god right here, because, you know, it's all about that. Okay, now, BBC. Controversial UN artwork unveiled, and it's this thing. Oh, I have a bigger picture of it in just a minute. Uh, an intricate ceiling painting uh, worth 18 million euros has been un un unveiled at the United Nations offices in Geneva. Okay, so this is in Geneva. Uh, this is 2008, so this was a while ago. Let's see, immense heat. The artist recently revealed the inspiration behind his mighty colored abstract. Okay, let me zoom in in case you want to quote. On a day of immense heat in the middle of the Sahel Desert, I recall with vivacity the, the, mirage, the mirage of an image of the world dripping toward the sky. <laughs> yeah, so in other words... So, in other words, the heat got to his head. <laughs> um, and maybe he was, uh, you know, uh, partaking of some things that are frowned upon uh, by most governments. Uh, trees, dunes, donkeys, multicolored beings flowing drop by drop. Oh, that's such a beautiful idea. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so here it is. It's uh, this horrible-looking cave-looking thing. It, look, it looks like it's three-dimensional because this is hanging down. Uh, yeah, you can see other parts over here hanging down. So, yeah. You know, isn't that perfect for the United Nations? Everything dissolving and <laughs> liquefying and going up to the sky? Uh, oh, okay, so I guess... Okay, so... This must be, if you, like, turn it upside down, so, like, this would be the Earth, and then every, everything liquefying, <laughs> dripping up into the sky. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, gosh, these people. These people. Um, okay, now this is on... Uh, the United Nations website. It's like a collection of uh, quote-unquote artwork. Oh yeah, by the way, look at the United Nations building. That that by itself looks like... Oh, what just happened? Go back here. Go back. Uh, I don't know why I did that. The United Nations building itself looks like that horrible... Um, well, this, the, the quote-unquote altar, and also the Millennium Hotel. You know, there, it seems like there might be some kind of connection there. I don't know. Uh, we have this beautiful, <coughs> excuse me, this beautiful abstract art on this side of that room. This looks like that room where it's like the General Assembly room. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Like, uh, one of the two ledger murals in the plenary hall of the General Assembly building uh, at the United Nations headquarters in New York. So there's that lovely thing, and then it looks like on the other side, there's this, uh, which is something I could have easily drawn. Uh, I mean, if this is what people are looking for, I, I can do this. I can do graphic design and, and sell this on products, so maybe I should use that for inspiration. Here's that statue, the whole, the one uh, about 
turning swords into plowshares. So uh, that's okay. Uh, I don't know why he has to be naked, but whatever. Uh, what, what else is there here? Uh, just, just, it's, it's freaky. It's just, that's, oh, this is just the side of the building. So there's like that dome thing over here and then the side of the building. Uh, people around a fire. Creepy looking ship. Looks like a, oh my gosh. <laughs> look at those people on the, they look, it looks like E.T. Look at this one right here. That looks like E.T. Let me zoom in all the way. Scroll over. Go up. Look how it's he their heads protrude like that. And then these are like, I don't know, Jawas or something like that coming off this ship. Oh, gosh. These guys, these people are freaks. They seriously are. Sorry sorry if I'm insulting anybody. Sorry. It's just my, just my opinion. Uh, that's how I view this artwork. Um, let's just look at a few more. All right, there's this beautiful um, thing. It looks like putty, like they drew their inspiration from Nutty Putty and turned it into bronze or something like that. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, I can't... This, this, this! Okay, this right here. That is straight up Babylonian. Well, it might be Sumerian. I don't know. Let's see. The government of Iraq presents in October 1977 to the United Nations a replica of the original Stel? Steli? Stel? Enumerating the laws of Hammurabi, Hammurabi, the oldest written code of laws known to mankind. Uh, the Steli depict depicting Hammurabi facing the god of the sun. Of course, it's the god of the sun. It's always the god of the sun. And receiving the code of laws from him. So, uh, I'm guessing that this is probably Sumerian, if this is the first code of laws that we know. Um, but of course, I mean, that would be basically be the, I, I think, the because Sumer is the first recognized human civilization, according to archaeology and science and all that stuff. So, and I think that it's basically the precursor to Babylon. You know, I, I always imagine that, and I'm not, I'm not saying that this is official, but whenever I think of history and I think about these things, I think about the Tower of Babel, which that was the start of Babylon, but it was kind of like a, a precursor society. So it wasn't like Babylon itself, like when we think of Babylon at the time of Daniel. So... But I, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably have to study that more. But either either way, um, you know, here, here you go right here. The 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 beast, like at least the very beginnings of of the beast, if you want to think of it that way. Um, um, oh, for heaven's sake. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't this just... Ugh... Uh, so horrible. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with them. Okay, well, we're just gonna end this now before I throw up. Um, okay, there's nothing here. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. That's my take on this image here. Uh, that's at the United Nations now. Yay. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, uh, leave your thoughts and opinions and any additional information in the comments below. Thank you, Alicia, for sending me that email. Everybody else, I will get to your emails. Just give me time and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.